Hey there, innovators and investors, today in the Tediverse podcast hosted by NF10. We're diving into the digital deep end and digital compass, navigating the transformative world of blockchain and real estate, and our guest today is Jess Kanak. Welcome, and here we go. Welcome, everybody, to the first episode of Today in the Tediverse, which is the first broadcast of a real estate and Web3 show coming to you live from the Metaverse and the Tediverse studio. Our first guest today is Jesse Canuck. Jesse, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Well, Ted, it's great to be here on the Tediverse. It's interesting because this is a new media for me and everybody, I'm sure. Uh, I can't even tell if I'm actually standing on the couch or if I'm on the couch. You tell me. <laughs> it's great to be Looks here. Like I am yep. I am thrilled. And uh, yes, as a broker in Mexico, I work with Brick Luxury and Living, the agency. And yeah, it's it's great to share something like this with you, Ted. So, well, I can I can definitely tell you that as things get going a little bit more, I will be just like Cristiano Ronaldo, a good good kid, take care of my mother. But I, you're gonna see some uh, not not saying that I'm gonna be rich, but you're gonna notice some differences with my avatar that I'm better looking. That's great, you know. <laughs> and uh, and what I find is interesting is that. Uh, this is going to be learning for everybody a long way, which is really what this is all about, right? I mean, just think uh, a couple of weeks ago or five or six weeks ago, whenever we started talking about this, um, how uh, how much you've seen in that period of time with with what we can do and how it's it's different uh, from what everybody else is doing. Right, and what everybody well. Here's the thing that we definitely want to avoid, and it's so easy to recognize for people that's been in the industry for long enough, and that's the same thing that everybody does, and kind of boring. So doing something unique that actually is not only useful for your clients, but it engages your clients, it's interactive, it brings a whole new side of real estate to the reality because we already know everything's confusing as it is but we're all kind of growing in this new day and age and this new technology that's going to make it easier for us not, not that uh it you know well yeah we're basically going to be relying on it pretty soon right Todd? well you, you bring up a really great point when you said that um that everybody kind of does the same thing and and that's what people are used to and that's really kind of part of the problem, you know, and, and what I mean by that and, and why we're here broadcasting from the metaverse, which is the next, let's just say, the new and improved Internet. But, but that is essentially the problem is that the, the current Internet, let's call it Web 2, is, uh, it, it is what it is in that uh, people are used to it. Uh, and not just the users, not just the good actors, shall we say, but uh, the nefarious ones too know the ins and outs of of how to get around this and that, and how to trick people or steal identity or fish or any of that stuff. And so that too is part of the purpose of of all of this is to kind of leave that whole mindset and I, I mean, for lack of a better way to put it. To, to leave the current version of the internet, even though it's comfortable and the way things are done, we're going to have to evolve and leave that behind into uh, a more efficient one, one that's safer and that protects people from a lot of the stuff we're talking about. And yeah, what's that old saying? Uh, learn or die, right? You got to survive. But let's let's break it down a little bit because like I'm of the age where I used to have a Blockbuster video membership. I used to ask permission at school to use the rotary dial in the nurse's office if I felt sick to go home, right? So <clears throat> we need to break down what Web 2 is 
and how people will know what Web3 is by breaking it down so that they have something familiar to work up. So imagine, Ted, we just came from a 56K dial-up modem to the Tediverse. So Can you break down Web2 a little bit for, I don't know, maybe I'll do some translating also for, let's say, the average everyday normal guy and gal. Oh, you, you cut out for a second there. Well, um, as a matter of fact, you bring that up, and I just typed that into, into our chat. I actually do have a presentation. I have a bunch of things that are going to be coming out, and one of which is about the transition from Web 2 to Web 3, the current Internet. Uh, and, and we'll even go back to Web 1, which was you know essentially the first version of the Internet. And you mentioned Blockbuster, which is... Uh, uh, a few years old, but uh, you know, I remember when the first internet uh, for real estate came out was was right around 1997, 1998. Um, I hate to date myself like that, but I I remember that, and it was a whole different world than it is now. Um, on on dial up connections, and you had to wait forever for something to to download. It was a lot more of a a one way. Uh, street, if you will, than Web 2 or the current internet. And the easiest way for me to uh, get people to understand what the current internet, um, what what features uh, we're referring to that differentiate it from Web 1 is essentially you can transact business on your mobile phone now with, with a payment app. So there's a, a whole lot wrapped up into what I just said. But essentially, it's it's a lot faster uh, up and down as opposed to the first one was which was just down, and now we've been able to add uh, secure um, commerce functions, uh, you know, to to the to the point that uh, it can be with the current iteration of the internet. Um, now, <clears throat> it's not a short conversation to talk about Web three, but in a nutshell. Uh, it, it's the next version of the internet that is on multiple different layers. So there's not one point of attack, if you will, for people to get in or, or uh, to, to keep people out. Uh, and so uh, Web3 will be referred to as, as the internet of value uh, because uh, people's data, among other things, are going to be secured and encrypted. And, uh, and inscribed in all the different layers. Actually, they're called nodes, which, which are all the different computers on the network where whatever you're talking about is distributed. You'll also hear the term distributed ledger, which is what all that stuff is about. And basically, it's, it's a way to, uh, to basically upgrade everything that is currently um, used today whether whether it's encrypted in software or not but uh the the next iteration web 3 will incorporate all these things that we're talking about uh it will prevent identity theft and fraud it'll give people a lot more control over the the data they allow other people to see and that's also going to include uh the monetization of data that uh, that is uploaded by somebody uh, about themselves or something else and restrictions on other people's use of it. So hopefully that wasn't too much of a ramble uh, and, and brought, uh, you know, is, is a, a short of, uh, a history from Web 1, 2, 3 uh, as we have time for right now. Now, you really, you broke it down pretty good. Like, I still think that we're going to have some audience members that haven't heard about the new Mike Tyson computer yet, though. And that's the one that comes with two bytes and no memory. Ew. Well, we can we can pick it up in production because yeah, they, you know they can take uh, some of you, not your ramble, but some of what your your dialogue was, and they can have new pieces together, and we'll have a show out of this as well. <clears throat> that yeah, was pretty interesting. Go ahead. I was gonna say, for me, the best way that I can learn is from our past right so a lot of people were always scared to be on the computer because they're like oh people can say your identity 
But now we've come to a day and age where we really rely on our computer to not only store our passwords, but also to build uh, protection against people that want to invade those spaces, right, Ted? So is that that's something kind of what you're talking about with the Web3. Can you expand on that a little bit? How it takes a regular person who's maybe like, okay, I just downloaded a wallet, who just learned the concept of what a digital wallet is. Now, what does W3 do for that person? Can you tell us, Ted? Okay, well, I mean, it, essentially, it, it, it makes everything a lot more safe and secure with the way everything is encrypted and encoded. So, um, like I touched on a, a minute ago, um, with, with respect to your data and, and what you allow people to see and where you go is all going to be uh, controllable uh, by the individual, which is a feature that Web2 does not provide everybody. And, and really, quite frankly, why all of these big platforms are taking advantage of the current situation in the United States any, anyway, by scraping everybody's data that gets on a platform and whatnot. So as this transition um, occurs, people will be able to visit websites in a different way, sort of like what you're looking at here uh, or in the other, uh, in, in an actual Tediverse space where you'll be able to uh, walk around, you'll be able to interact with people in a different way, navigation will be uh, completely different, you'll have a lot more control over the information that you allow the website to have when you, when you create an account. Um, and, uh, and, and likewise with uh, the, the payment methods. You know, uh, the, a, a wallet is merely an account that's connected to however, whatever forms of, of payment you intend to use, whether it's your, your bank account or your, your debit card or, or a crypto wallet. And so um, all, all of this kind of fits neatly into the, the next uh, evolution of internet technology. Totally. And it kind of goes hand in hand with like the Ford cars where they got the seatbelt. Not only was the seatbelt important, but it got us to the next point, but it kept us safe and allowed us to use uh, the cars and our tools to the fullest capability that it can, right? So then now tell us a little bit about, uh, well, we got so much we can talk about when we dive into the world of NFTs and how they work today. Uh, by the way, I uh, pose for the selfie. Uh, I, I'd like to introduce you to the audience. And, and why don't you, while I figure out how to sit back down, tell us a little bit about how, how we met and what brought you here and, and you, the company that you work for that is also looking to bring um, international uh, vacation rental type properties uh, to uh, to the the Tediverse and to other people who might not uh, otherwise see some of these uh, these investment properties that uh, that you have available. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for the introduction, Ted. I'm Jesse Canuck, the Good Canadian Kid. And I work with Brick Luxury and Living, and I get the fantastic opportunity to not only live down here in Mexico, in the Cantu Cancun area in Quintana Roo, but I get the opportunity to meet people every day that want to do exactly what I ended up getting to do. And that's living down here, buying and selling real estate, coming in legally, doing everything the way that you would imagine, where you buy a vacation property, you don't use it all the time, but you use it part of the time. And that other time, you can actually make some lucrative money off of that passive investment as well. Uh, uh, I've noticed a lot about clients that are coming from North America, and that's that's my bread and butter right there. Nice folks coming from Canada and U.S. And they ask me all the time questions about, is it um, possible to buy in Mexico? Um, what is a Fido Camiso? what are the steps to buying and a lot of times i see similarities to how it is in the united states as well as in canada obviously it's a different 
country, so they've got their process, and it can be a little bit different, but there are a lot of similarities. And and if you go through it step by step, it's easily done. And if you've got an agent that's working for you, that's very organized, does things in a timely manner, you end up in a, a conclusion that makes you very happy because of the fruition of either the pre-construction development that you purchased or a resale that you've decided to purchase from somebody that maybe did, wanted to move on from this vacation, great place to live, to the next place. Does, does that make sense? Yeah, you know, you bring up a good point, and we'll we'll have plenty of chance to uh, discuss a lot of the topics that uh, I'm going to bring up here. But uh, you know, I think a lot of people are curious about ownership of a property in Mexico, in other in another country, and um, and some of the other uh, uh, some of the opportunities that are there, not just in in Tulum or Cancun, but uh, you've got a couple of other spots down there, or other builders and developers that are. Are lining up to participate in what we're doing right now to get the word out about some of the projects they're doing and that want to uh, be able to accept crypto yeah and this is exciting because not only is it going to help the foreign investor be organized but it's also going to provide one source one wallet one name way to keep everything organized and easily trackable so i'm really excited for that because yeah as, as you said earlier everything's got growing pains but um once you get there it's the growing pains end up only being a memory as long as you did everything correctly and you can enjoy where you ended up you know that's that's really a great point too uh you know once people become a little bit familiar with what with how this is all done you know, and this is going to sound a little bit of uh, absurd because everybody relies on it right now. But uh, we're going to be able to communicate with our clients inside uh, a secure portal. Uh, you know, now that people are familiar with setting up an account on treat uh, on uh, on spatial like this, um, it, they'll become a lot more comfortable visiting other opportunities like this. Uh, j just like when you go to Amazon, for example, and, and it remembers where you looked and the things you looked at, uh, it's going to be a similar experience uh, shopping for property this way with the builder developers that, that work with us and uh, want to provide that type of opportunity uh, and marketing for their properties. I am going to try a reaction to see if this uh, matches how I feel because I agree, Ted. Nice. Right. So this is this is gonna you know uh, again it's gonna sound funny to to not to talk about not using email, but actually email is one of those uh, features of the of Web two that that is the cause of many of the problems we all have to deal with that we've already talked about uh, all the the bad actors and so it, it's really a time uh to to change and evolve and and be aware that there are bad actors that are looking to get into your email address for example and we can communicate on this platform or on uh, other secure encrypted instant messaging platforms that that won't expose anybody's private uh, details, personal details, details of a real estate transaction to anybody who might try and get that information and, and, and end up wanting to, to, to try and perpetrate some type of uh, uh, wire fraud or title fraud. They, they just won't be able to with this new method. Yeah, and nobody knows exactly where this saying came from, uh, but uh, for evil to triumph, basically good people need to do nothing. And, and this is a way that not only can somebody be proactive for themselves, but it's a welcome environment that uh, has open arms for people that want to have a protected environment for, for others as well. So not only are you protecting yourself, but you're coming in protecting other people as well. So it's a mutual beneficial community that not only looks out for each other, but wants to do business with each other. And it sounds like the records of transactions are going to be 
easily able to follow because it goes through a blockchain. Correct, Ted? Can you tell us a little bit about that? Man, some those are some really great softballs you're tossing up there. Uh, I mean, this whole thing is about making it, uh, it easy and efficient and convenient. And so when we start talking about doing a real estate transaction on a platform, and we'll talk about uh, one of the companies that uh, has really uh, uh, put me in, in this metaverse space in the Tetaverse right now. Uh, we will talk about Proppy quite a bit, but Proppy has an ecosystem from, from beginning to end that won't ever expose uh, any, any transaction details, including those of the participants, um, because it's all done in that uh, in that secure, oh, there we go, got it, um, in that secure ecosystem. So from the time an offer is submitted uh, from our website or one of our applications, um, it, it, it's automatically uh, submitted on what's called a smart contract, which is uh, a, a way of saying uh, a paper contract that is encoded into software. Um, and so uh, all of the contracts, uh, along with explanations of them all, are, are found within this ecosystem. So from the very beginning, uh, everything is, is encoded into software, sort of like a video game, if you will, where, you know, let, let's say the, the, the end of the game is when escrow closes and money transfers hands, the buyer gets the property, the seller gets the proceeds. But there, there's a, a, a route that is traveled <clears throat> from the time the buyer starts looking to, the fi to, to when they find a property and initiate an offer. And that, that starts a whole chain of events with participants, uh, not, not just uh, of the transaction, but uh, of the moving parts and, uh, and other companies that have to play a role, whether it's an inspector or, you know, for the moment, a title company that needs to record uh, the, the IRL, the in real life aspect of it. But um, the, the, the whole thing is incorporated into software. Uh, everybody will move when it's their turn to move. An inspection will be done or, or uh, a deposit submitted. And along the, the, the way, everybody is notified of each move the other people make. Uh, everybody's notified when it's their turn to act. And it, and it all happens, you know, smoothly and like clockwork inside software that, that nobody who doesn't have the key can get into. So it's, it's completely a safe environment for people to be able to, uh, to fill out forms, to submit forms to other parties. And when all that is said and done and the transaction is, is complete, it also gets recorded on blockchain further um, making it difficult for anybody to, to uh, perpetrate any kind of fraud. But at the same time, this also uh, creates part of the chain of title, which is what we're all after is, uh, is to be able to uh, trans transfer property from one person to another and, and have its, uh, its chain of title where it came from uh, absolute and there not be any clouds or anything that could go wrong with it. Uh, and so, um, again, uh, you, you brought up a really great point and that allowed me to elaborate. Glad I could be a part of that because yeah, there's so much that we could cover and go over. I guess that's why people are going to have to tune in, uh, to the next show, right? Because I know we've only got an hour, but there is more than an hour to tuck into a show. If we could just meta cast it. Maybe people could download it, but still, you got to comprehend and digest, right, Ted? Yeah, well, I mean, that's really uh, what it, what this is all about is is bringing people along on the journey of the transition from the current internet to the next iteration of it, and um, of course, uh, people's identity and their data. And and its protection um, is what what it's all about. And so um, uh, the bad actors need to be stopped. The good actors need to be assured 
that uh, what they are trying to do is is going to unfold as as expected with no uh, curveballs or anybody doing anything they shouldn't. So, um, yeah, it's it's really an exciting time to be talking about all of this stuff. And not only that, but there's incentives for people to do the right thing. Um, you were mentioning that as people get more engaged. And obviously, the more engaged people are, the more safe of a community it is because everybody knows everybody in a in a respected private sort of way, right? Because everybody's engaged through the the blockchain. But what uh, what were you saying about some of the incentives that people can get involved with? All right, um, you know, uh, again, a lot to un- <clears throat> unpack there. Um, as far as uh, the incentives go, it's not just uh, learning what you need to know in order to be able to transact business moving forward. But uh, we're going to incentivize people to to travel that uh, that path and provide rewards for for doing certain activities, creating a wallet, creating a an account here in spatial, creating an avatar. You know, these are kind of some of the first steps that you'll have to learn and understand and become familiar with in order to be able to understand and 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 explore the the rest of the metaverse that is not the tetaverse if anybody would want to do such a thing. Correct. Well Ted, I guess we're gonna have to what, do another TED cast, right? To include some more of this information so that people can tune in and find out. Yeah, so uh, we're going to be doing this on a nightly basis. Uh, the the plan is to do it at uh, 8, 8 p.m. Pacific time, uh, which will give everybody a chance to be home from work and not have to rearrange their work schedule to participate in an interesting discussion where they can learn things that they probably won't hear many other places. And we're, we're going to talk about so many different things from uh, – not, not just uh, the the opportunities that Jesse's here to to share with us in in Mexico, but uh, we we're gonna have we're gonna talk about real estate uh, in both Las Vegas and and South Florida, where uh, I'm licensed. But uh, you know the fact of the matter is um, we can sell buy buy and sell real estate list real estate anywhere in the world. I, I've actually got. Uh, um, access to properties in Dubai, where I travel to almost every year, and, and other locations throughout Central America. And uh, this is where everything is going. Uh, we've also uh, figured out a way to be able to display uh, these properties to potential buyers in in a way that few, if any, other real estate agents have by creating a space like this, uh, the Tetaverse, if you'll want to take a walk around there you'll have to create your avatar and whatnot but there are a lot of different places to explore in the real estate side of the tetaverse in the content side of the tetaverse with our with our apps and our virtual tours and and this type of stuff you're looking at and listening to right now uh but yeah this is going to be a an exciting journey for everybody to come along we we will have sponsors and guests on every day and we're going to talk about the things that uh, that you're going to be interested in hearing about that you might not hear through, uh, you know, most real estate agents or even most um, associations who uh, have just not uh, taken this leap that we're taking before anybody else getting into the, the metaverse, creating a essentially the first immersive and virtual 3D website. If well, uh, that about uh, wraps it up for today. I, I'd like to thank everybody for joining us today on the broadcast. Uh, we, we really hope that you've taken something of value with you and uh, look forward to seeing you tomorrow where we'll do it all over again. Thanks very much.